Good morning. I hope that every week you save the insert in the bulletin that Diana has prepared to keep us up to date on what is happening in our church. Now session has an announcement. It is now time for elder nominations. Uh, the session of St. Andrews will have five elders retiring this spring. In the next couple of weeks, we are asking you to nominate anyone who you feel would be a suitable candidate, or you can nominate yourself. An elder must be a professing member of the congregation and must be an example to the believers in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity as stated in 1 Timothy 4.12. Elders, once lawfully called to the office, are ordained for life. Eldership at St. Andrews is a six-year commitment, but any elder may stand for re-election at the end of a six-year term. There are nomination forms on the office counter, and uh, you can give completed forms to Reverend Ed or Laurie James. Laurie will be home from Spain on Wednesday. I got an email, and they're having a wonderful time. Our youth or our sp spring rummage sale is on Saturday, April 27th at 8 a.m. You can drop off donations any time that week. And we'll have a sewing day to get ready for the bazaar on Friday, April 26th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Now, on May 1st, we are having a very special visitor. Reverend Mary Fontaine, moderator of the 2023 General Assembly, will be coming to visit our presbytery, and St. Andrews is the host church. There will be an opportunity to meet Reverend Fontaine at a meet and greet at 4.30, followed by a turkey dinner at a cost of $20 at 5.30. At 7 o'clock, there will be a worship service at which Reverend Fontaine will speak. She is the first First Nations moderator for General Assembly and a founding director of Hummingbird Ministries. I am looking forward to hearing her speak. If you plan on attending the dinner, please put your name on the sign-up sheet on the office counter or send me an email by April 23rd. My email is just gladyspenichetti at gmail.com. Nancy and Helen are also looking for volunteers to help prepare, serve, and clean up the dinner. I look forward to seeing you all there. Good morning, everyone. I have a couple of reminders and a couple of new announcements. Uh, on May the 4th, which is a Saturday, the REACH Center is holding their annual run slash race slash walk. Uh, the REACH Center, for those of you who aren't familiar, uh, provides programming and support for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And St. Andrews has a team signed up to participate in the run or walk um, to help support them. So there is a sign-up sheet on the counter uh, where the office is, or you can just come and talk to me and I will get you all signed up if you would like to participate, and I would encourage you to do so. Um, another new development is I will be holding membership classes for youth aged 14 and up starting this coming Tuesday, April 16th 
from 3.30 to 4.30. So this is for uh, youth who are interested in becoming members and exploring what it means to be a disciple of Christ. And we're going to be talking about the fundamentals of the faith together. Um, if you or a young person you know is interested, please get in touch with me. And also a couple of reminders that our next youth group meeting is going to be held on Wednesday, April 24th from 3.30 to 5.30 and dinner will be provided. And uh, a reminder about the Uplift event that's going on from July 3rd to 7th. Uh, this event uh, is happening in St. Catharines and the Presbyterian Church in Canada and the United Church are partnering up to put on several days of fellowship, worship, games, recreational activities. It's going to be an absolute blast. There are going to be a lot of really amazing speakers there. Um, it's a great opportunity to get to know people in your age group from your neighborhood um, because they will be kind of you know where people are staying they have regional groups so that you get an opportunity to socialize with people from your area that you might not have met before so there are three streams at this event there's a youth stream uh, for youth aged uh, youth who have graduated grade nine by this summer um, and older. There's also a young adult stream for adults aged 18 to 25. And there's a leadership stream. So if you volunteer in a ministry in the church, um, you might be interested in the leadership stream. And we are able to send a few people. So please, please, please get in touch with me if you're interested in going. Uh, if you know someone who might be interested in going, it's a really fantastic opportunity. These are really meaningful events and a lot of fun. I've also got a couple of the brochures. If people want more details, um, they are on the counter uh, in the office area as, as well. And now let us worship God. Wonderful, Matthew. Thank you. Well, worship this morning. It's so great to meet together. And today we have a special celebration and we have communion that we can remember what Jesus said. Do this in remembrance of me, especially when we're so busy in life, when we get distracted, we're always brought back again to the main thing that we're loved children of God. So great to see you all. And if you're new or this is uh, maybe your first Sunday, you've come a few Sundays and you haven't signed the guest book yet, we've got three choices for you. 
And there's one here and then two in the Narthex area. And if you'd like to sign the guest book, that would be great. Welcome to all of those, of course, who are worshiping with us online. It's so wonderful. We have that technology. And we're here to have joy as we worship. And the joy of the Lord is our strength, as the song goes. God bless you as we worship together. And we have a call to worship. And I will be the one. And then you and myself will join in to be the all. Shall we have this responsive lesson together? We gather with joy, for Easter brings us new life. The risen Christ is with us wherever we go. Love breaks all bonds and unites us in hope. Christ has defeated death. Let us rejoice and be glad. Come and worship with hearts full of praise. O oh God, receive our grateful hallelujahs. Amen. Now that uh, a favorite hymn for a number of people, Will Your Anchor Hold, number 744, in our hymn books, if you want to follow in the hymn books. Otherwise, the words are on the screens. Wonderful hymn. Please be seated, everyone. I was ready for another verse. I don't know about you, but just so great song. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear God, we just come with open hands and open hearts and minds to learn from you, from your spirit, to get comfort and joy and to um, just strengthen one another's relationships here today. Lord, thank you for all who are here at worship, and we trust, Lord, in you, and we learn to build our trust in you. <coughs> Lord, we also come with heaviness on our hearts for those things that we have done, where we've hurt others, 
disappointed others, disappointed you, and even hurt ourselves, Lord. Lord, we pray for forgiveness. And we all come together now in a moment of silent prayer as we confess our sins before you. Shall we pray silently in our hearts? We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The good news is this, that through the resurrection of Christ, we are saved, meaning that we have nothing to fear, nothing in life or in death, any rulers or principalities, anything, anything in life or even in death can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. And that is such good news. And that's good news that we take with us, even though life isn't easy. And uh, as we sang in the hymn, we've got these worries and fears and, and so on. But Jesus is the rock on which we stand. Amen. At this time, we um, are going to have a children's song. Just a little bit of faith. And I'd like to invite those who want to come forward. Um, Matthew is going to lead. And then um, after that, we're going to have a prayer, a responsive prayer. So we can all sing this together because the words are going to be on the screens. Yeah. Right to the point, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. There's going to be a prayer. Tristan will lead us in that. Yeah. So today, we're going to be hearing a story about the disciples, the close friends of Jesus, that happens very shortly after the resurrection. And in this story, the disciples feel a little confused and uncertain, unsure about what's going on. And as Reverend Ed beautifully said in his prayers, I think we all, we all feel that way sometimes. We feel scared, we have worries, we're not sure what's gonna happen next, we're worried about the future. So I'm gonna share a prayer that we can use when we're feeling like this. And this prayer is combined with our breath. So I'm, I'm gonna have everyone repeat the prayer after me first, and then we're gonna say it silently. So I'll give you some instruction. When it's Jesus, stay with me. And when you say Jesus, you breathe in. When you say stay with me, you breathe out. But I'll just get everyone to repeat the prayer after me first. Jesus, Jesus. stay with me. Stay with me. Very good. And so when you breathe in, you say the first part. You breathe out, you say the second part. <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> All right, is everyone ready for just a moment of silence? I'm going to take a deep breath in and a deep breath out and say, Jesus, stay with me. Ready? I 
I see some people deep in prayer, which is lovely to see. So take this with you whenever you're feeling a little unsure or a little worried, and I hope it will help strengthen you in those times. So it's now time for the kids to go to their Sunday school classes with that prayer in mind. And the kids are coming back for communion. They're going to join us. We're going to, after the message, going to sing, and then um, they will be coming up at that time. Good morning. Today's scripture reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 36b to 48. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
it's uh I think we're better now. Perfect. Thank you, Peter. As I was saying, we say that with Easter, Christ is risen. And we say, he is risen indeed. And then we go hallelujah or alleluia. And um, what the choir just said is, Christ is risen, arisen. And then we rise with him, that second part, eh? And the, to trust that, we celebrate with joy what Christ has done. And then... The next part is to put your trust in God and know that because he rose, we rise with Christ. Beautiful choir, beautiful anthem, a beautiful teaching for us today. Shall we pray? Dear God, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of all our hearts together be pleasing and acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So... <laughs> As uh, Tristan so nicely put it, Jesus is meeting with the disciples shortly after he rose from the dead. And he wanted them to know that he rose. Wanted them to trust because it was a bit of a mystery to them, right? Jesus said to them, why are you frightened? And why do you doubt? Why do doubts, rather, arise in your hearts? And Jesus wanted to talk them through what this was all about. He knows that they have doubts. He knows that we have doubts. And it's part of our faith and trust. A little bit of faith, right? And sometimes we think we have a little bit of faith. And then sometimes we think we have more faith. But even in a little bit of faith, a little bit of trust, God works through that. And we try to compare ourselves often with others in terms of our faith. But to have that trust and to know that God rose through Jesus Christ, we rise with Christ, meaning we win the victory over sin and death and everything that leads to death. But it was hard for them to understand they were afraid. They thought he was a ghost because resurrection was something quite unusual, wasn't it? What frightens you? I know Jackie and I, we talk about it, and we have some of the same things that frighten us, but we have different things that we're afraid of. It's kind of interesting how that is, isn't it? It's interesting that people are afraid or fear different things. And often it's stuff that's out of our control, okay? We feel vulnerable, and we don't like to feel vulnerable. What's going to happen next year? New Year's celebrations. I don't know what the year holds. I hope everything's going to be okay. And that is coming from the orientation of fear, isn't it? Because we can't control it. But we know who holds our future, right? We know that through Jesus. Our fears can take away our joy. The practice of daily gratitude helps us to go to Thanksgiving quickly when doubts arise. Now, a little story. Yesterday, I woke up in the morning. We had a power outage. I couldn't make my coffee. Oh, terrible. I felt a little sorry for myself. And then I realized, you know what? This is a first world problem, right? It's a fr And... Though I have battery backup in my milking machine, I couldn't milk my cow because I had to wash it and I didn't have water because my pump is run with electricity. So I was feeling like things weren't working that well for us yesterday, feeling a little sorry for myself. But my son and daughter-in-law, they have power. They live in the, the one concession behind us. They had power, so they invited us over for breakfast. How great is that, right? But I was still thinking, poor B, a little bit. So we were in the car going over to Luke and, and Jenny's place and our grandchildren, of course. And then Jackie just spontaneously goes into a prayer of thanksgiving of all the good things 
that are happening in our lives. <laughs> and you stop feeling sorry for yourself pretty quick, right? And the minister has to be reminded as well. It basically was an inconvenience for me. But my day changed and poor me, but oh, not poor me. God is good all the time, right? So the disciples saw Jesus and they were so excited. It was too good to be true. They were enjoying it. They were seeing him right in front of them and they were filled with joy. Can you imagine what they were feeling? And what I want you to do is for you to imagine to be in the text as well. Okay, even though it was 2,000 years plus ago, I want you to imagine yourself into the text. Be one of those disciples of Jesus because we are disciples. And just imagine the risen Christ. And that's what we're called to do with the scriptures. We're to bring them into the present, right? The risen Christ is before you. It was incredible. Jesus was alive. This is a miracle beyond anyone's experience and expectations, though it was in the scriptures foretold for them to be aware of. And Jesus makes that clear in the piece of scripture a little later in our scripture today. But we so easily forget what we already know, right? We easily forget. He wrote in the book of John, we read that Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, right? They saw a resurrection. But then that the Lord God's self, Jesus, resurrected? Whew. Is this really true? Are we to be afraid? Jesus wanted them to know he was still human. Oh, sorry. I want to go back. I was just going to go back to the picture where Jesus' hands are open. Thank you, Peter. Appreciate that. And he says, it's really me. You know, they're still not so sure. And then Jesus says the mundane thing, right? Is there anything to eat around here? Right? We're talking about spiritual things. We're talking about resurrection. And then he talks about a plain thing. And why was that so important? Have you anything here to eat? Who says that? Everyone. Everyone from time to time, because they are human and need food to sustain their bodies and find relief from hunger. Who says that if they're not human, right? So Jesus says, I'm hungry. This is Jesus. They see the nails in his hands, says he's hungry. He is so human, the basics of humanity, right? We have to eat and drink to stay alive. A, a ghost doesn't need to eat or drink, but a bed does. And Jesus has risen. Hallelujah. Then he, Jesus opened their minds to understand the scripture. Are your minds open to understanding scripture yourself? Are you open to the story that Jesus is telling the disciples? And I want you to place yourself in the story that it says in the scriptures that the Messiah had to suffer and had to die and be raised. Are you internalizing that? Are you listening like the disciples are there? And are you willing to be changed? Jesus talks about the change that happens in our lives because of the resurrection. And forgiveness, the non-judgmentalism, the grace that came into the world through Jesus. And Jesus says, you disciples, and I'm pointing to you as well, you are witnesses to that. The truth of life, right? What is the truth? And people, Pontius Pilate said that at Jesus crucified, as Jesus' crucifixion. But in our postmodern culture as well, people are asking what is the truth, right? But what we do know 
is that the nature of the universe, the nature of God, is love. We know that. We know that is the truth, and it's grace. That love goes beyond just the Hollywood love that we see, but it goes as far as unconditional love, where Jesus loved his children so much that he gave his life for his friends, and we're all his friends. There's no greater love, right? And that greatest love is that he defeated sin and death and everything that leads to death. And there's nothing we can do to make God love us more, and there's nothing we can do to make God love us less. That is grace. And that is the truth of the universe, the truth of our Lord. And that's, hold on to that. We belong to God. He rose from the dead, hallelujah, but we also rise with him. It's not just a metaphorical thing. He rose physically, and we rise with him. Sorry, I'm just going too far here. Um, can you just put us back to that last one, Peter? Then he opened their minds to understand the perfect. Thank you. Why are you frightened? Right? And why do doubts rise in your hearts? Trust in Jesus who came in a way documented in scriptures. We have the promise that the Messiah was coming and it was fulfilled in Jesus. The Messiah came to be our Savior, the risen Lord. We don't have to control everything. We know because of Christ's death and resurrection, he holds the future. And that is the basis for so much of our fears, right? What's going to happen? What's going to happen to my children? What's going to happen to the world, right? But when we can allow Christ to hold the future, then we can put those burdens on him, and then we can be empowered to work towards healing. Fear diminishes us, right? Love expands us, and we're able to go forward knowing that Christ is with us. I have a little acronym that I've made up this week as I was preparing the sermon. And it's T-U-G, tug, okay? As we are working in our lives and practicing the trust in Jesus, as the disciples were when the risen Christ was in front of them and they still didn't trust and then Jesus says, is there anything around here to eat? That was, he became human, needed to eat even after he rose from the dead. And they became fearless evangelists from their encounter with the risen Christ. Put yourself in the room. The T in T-U-G in tug is the truth, Okay. The truth is, we don't have to be afraid. Even though we fear we're in this world, and when we meet Jesus face to face, then there will be perfect peace. So Jesus understands that we still fear, right? But in this acronym of T, I want to suggest to you for trust in the truth. Grace is the truth. Right? And it's the truth for you and I. Because of what Jesus did, we belong to God. We rise with him. Right? And then, the you is to confess your unbelief. Okay? Because we all have it. Right? We all have our fears, as I did yesterday, even though they were silly. We do a prayer as Jackie did, and healing comes through prayer. 
confess your unbelief and come to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, carry my burdens. And then the um, G is gratitude, right? To move to gratitude. You could say, Jesus is tugging us, right? Through the resurrection. I've done it for you. Look at my hands. It was prophesied in the Old Testament. And I'm the completion of that. Have gratitude for what Christ has done for you. Practice letting go of what might happen out of our control. Practice gratitude about all the gifts you have and what Christ has done. Let go. Be guided by the living, resurrected Christ present to us in the Holy Spirit to be witnesses for Christ. And that's how the scripture for today ends. And encourage one another. And say, hey, we've got the best news in the world. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. What's the last part? Hallelujah. Amen. And shall we sing together? We're going to do the invitation to communion a little later. Thine be the glory. Please remain standing, and this is an opportunity for us to confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. And shall we say in one voice together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, 
God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated, everyone. And you're all welcome to the table of our Lord today. Jesus wants us to come. Even if we have a little bit of faith or we feel we have more faith, um, Jesus says you can have faith as a mustard seed and you can move mountains. And you're all welcome. Our faith is very much the same but different as well. And wherever you are in your walk and your journey in faith in accepting and trusting Jesus, you're all welcome. And Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me because we so easily forget. We have our worries, we have our schedules, we have our distractions in life, right? Something can be, seem so important. Jesus says, do this in remembrance of me. I love you, I gave my life for you. Don't be afraid. Be nourished physically because Jesus is giving us something to eat, right? His body and blood, but then also spiritually as we are strengthened, as we go out into the world, which isn't always easy, right? There's worries, there's fears. But he says, come, I want to strengthen you and to share that, to be witnesses to this good news. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Shall we come to our God in prayer? Dear God, we thank you that your grace represented at the Lord's table is made visible through the bread and the grape juice. Lord, you feed us because you come to us. You suffered and died for us rose from the dead. So the victory's won. Help us to remember that and accept that victory as we take of the bread and grape juice, which symbolizes your body and blood. And it's made visible to us where grace is, Lord, invisible. It's there, but we don't see it. Thank you for providing this for us today to strengthen us, reminding us of your love that never fails. We pray for our congregation, Lord, for those who are ill at home, here, in hospital, wherever they are. Those awaiting surgery, Lord, we think of Jamie, who is having day surgery this Friday for a pacemaker operation. Be with him. Give him peace as he prepares for that. Help him not be afraid. And we pray for your healing touch upon him. Be with Penny Durst as well as she is having hip surgery also this Friday. We pray that that goes well as well, Lord, that these two surgeries go well and that healing will come from that for Penny. Lord, we pray also for our members of the choir, others who are coming back from their trip to Spain. Lord, we pray that the rest of their trip goes well and bring them back safely to us. We give you thanks. Lord, we pray for our world. We pray for peace and help us, Lord, through the power of your Holy Spirit to be open to learning how to be healers and witnesses to your love in the resurrection. We pray all these things as we celebrate communion today. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I just before we go further, I just want to give a few instructions, and a number of you have heard these a number of times, but it's always good to be reminded, and for those who haven't heard it. Um, so the, you'll have your elements served to you in the pews, okay? But once you receive each element, please wait until everyone has been served, and we will partake together, okay? Thank you, Tina, for providing that. That, uh, those instruction or that instruction. Dear people of God, dear friends of Christ, children of God, on the night before he died, our Lord took bread and after giving it a blessing, he broke the bread and said, this bread is my body broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. Every time you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat the bread and you drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. God's blessings to you as you receive communion and as we partake in the elements and celebrate the holy feast. Will my servers please come forward?
dear friends in Christ, take, eat, remember, and believe that the body of Christ was broken for you in love. Dear friends in Christ, take, drink, remember, and believe that the blood of Christ was shed for a complete forgiveness of all your sins. Gina. Shall we pray? Dear God, Thank you for the nourishment of the Lord's Supper that we could celebrate all together. Lord, we have been strengthened physically and spiritually as we go out into the world to witness, to be witnesses to the good news, to share the good news in how you have gifted each one of us. 
Help us be empowered, Lord, to do so. This news that is so vital for everyone to know. Thank you for your grace. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. It's now time for our offering. Shall we pray? Dear God, thank you for the abundance that you provide for us each day. And Lord, out of that abundance, you call us to share with those in need. Lord, we pray that these gifts go to advance your kingdom through alleviating pain and fear, hunger, poverty. Lord, and let those who receive it through the work of this church, through your mission, be joy, filled with joy, and may your name be glorified. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And shall we sing together the day of resurrection, our closing hymn, 249.
And just a reminder, everyone, that we have uh, refreshments downstairs. And if you can stay, that would be wonderful. We understand if you have to go. God bless you into the coming week. Receive the blessing of the Lord and go in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship, the communion, the guidance, the presence, and the grace of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you always this day, tomorrow, the day after that, and forevermore. Amen.